Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to see, use serialization of a user object. Serialization and deserialization are important concepts in regards to authentication. To serialize an object means to convert its contents into a small key that can be deserialized into the original object. This is what allows us to know who has communicated with the server without having to send the authentication data like username and password at each request for a new page. Uh, to set this up properly, we need to have a serialized function and a deserialized function in Passport. And we create these with user, and then we have a function and user with another function. Um, the serialized user is called with two arguments, the full user object and a callback used by a Passport. Uh, a unique key to identify that user should be returned in the callback. The easiest one to use being the user's uh, underscore ID in the object. It should be unique as it gener generated, it should be unique as it is generated by MongoDB. Similarly, deserialize user is called with that key and a callback function for passport as well. But this time, we have to take that key and return the full user object to the callback. To make a query search for Mongo underscore ID, you will have to create const object ID is equal to require Mongo DB object dot object ID. And then to use it, you call new object ID and then you pass in an ID. Be sure to add MongoDB as a dependency, and you can see the examples below. So here we have passport.serialize user, and we're passing in a callback function with user and done, and we're just saying done with uh, null and user ID. And then passport.deserialize user, and then we pass in the ID and uh, done, and then we're passing that into the, this block of code, which says my database. Um, so whatever your database is uh, that was set up when you required it above, uh, dot find one, <clears throat> and then with the with find one, we're passing in, we're saying the ID, and then we're a new object ID, and then if there's an error, and then if not, we return the doc. So and then we say done with null null. So deserialize user will throw an error until we set up the database in the next step. So for now, comment out the whole block and just call done null null in the function deserialize user. So deserialize user, we're just going to say none, null, null. Um, submit your page when you think you've got it right. If you're running into errors, you can check our project completed up to this point here. Okay, so um, let's just go through this one at a time. So to set up properly, we need to have a serialization. Uh, I guess I want to check to see Ne let's see, next, implement the serialization of a passport user, authenticate strategies, how to passport strategy. Okay. Uh, to set up this properly, we need to have a serialized function and a deserialized function in passport. So passport.deserialize and unserialized. So we'll just take this back over. And um, you see, we've, we've required passport here, so we can do that. Um, this right here, we're starting to start, start it off. So, well, the session is when we're doing the express session. Uh, we, we, pa we initialize Passport and we do the session work here. So I think that we should make this, um, this is all the Passport stuff, so we should do it here. And so I'm just copying and pasting this in here just to kind of get it quickly, because we know we need passport.serialize user and deserialize user. And um, it's called in, with two arguments. So serialize is called with two ar arguments the full user object and a callback used in a passport. So here they're doing serialize user, but they're only passing in a single callback function, which means that they're just probably just stubbing it in for now. So yeah, I think we can copy this for now too and take it over to here. Serialize user, we just wanna make it like this. Um, so yeah, it's a callback function. Uh, and then when we're done, we pass in the user ID. Um, same thing with this, really. I mean, I don't really know what else I can do. Deserialize my database dot find one by ID. Um, so yeah, let's just pop this in here as well. ID done my database. I don't think we have that. Yeah, we we're we're calling it my DB up here. So we'll want to make it my DB find one ID new object error done done. 
All right. Well, I mean, as far as I can tell, I think they're just trying to explain to us how this works. Um, so this is all our passport ones. So I think it makes sense to kind of block these codes together here. So uh, we'll throw an error until we set up the DB. Um, deserialize the user will throw an error. Deserialize until we set up the database. So I'm not really sure if this is going to work. So let's save it here and then we'll come back over here and I'll go nodemon and we'll go uh, server.js. So it's good that at least the server ran so we can tell that that's working to a degree. And now if we go back to, uh, this is our uh, production app and here's here we are locally and it looks like it's running locally like uh, we're getting the answer back. Um, so yeah, I guess the best thing to do now is just to push up our changes. So we're going to go get, well, if we go get diff, we can tell that we've added this to um, and get status our server JS file. So git add, uh, git commit. So we've added it, ad added our changes to, um, to, we staged our changes so that we can commit them. And so now we're going to commit them with a message, um, add serialize user and deserialize user to passport. Um, cool. Now that we've committed that, we're going to go git push Heroku. And that's going to push our code up to uh, our production server. So uh, yeah. And then once that's complete, we should be able to come over to um, here and paste in the URL for our production server. Um, now, again, it's not going to work until this is complete. So I'm going to come over here and paste this in. And um, we'll just wait for the six. OK, cool. It just build succeeded. Um, Three packages are looking for funding. A lot of these are open source projects, so they look for funding from people. Um, my guess is that if somebody used uh, Passport in an app that was really useful, they'd probably uh, pay for it. But um, they'd probably pay open source people to keep working on that project. Um, so yeah, now that it's complete, we should be able to run this challenge and see if what happens. MongoDB should be properly required, including the object ID. Hmm, interesting. So I, they were talking about that up here, require mongodb.objectid. You, you will have to create const object ID like this. Hmm, cool. Well, um, we should just throw this in with uh, mongodb. Const object ID is equal to raw, require mongodb object ID. Um, so what's, what, what are we doing there? To make a query search for a mongo underscore ID, you will have to create this object ID. Hmm. Object ID, new object ID. Okay, so it's interesting that this didn't that this didn't work that this did work, but it's probably because we actually didn't make any calls to that. Um, so I just stubbed that in, and um, let's push it to the Heroku. So git add, git commit, dash m, and we're gonna say um, require object ID. Add require object ID, and then git push Heroku, and I'm gonna speed this up real quick. Okay, now that it's uh, deployed, we can go back over to here. We don't have to re-enter this address because we've just changed where it goes to. And if we commit, that looks like the problem. All right, so if you're having any problems with this, I would say if you're running into errors, make sure that you, you're, you're using this passport function after you initialize passport. I would imagine that that would cause an error. And you want to make sure your const require passport is above all of this stuff. Um, another thing is you want to make sure your database is the way that you const it up here, that you set it, uh, the, the constant variable up here. And so I don't know, maybe that would make a mistake. And uh, so those are some things to look at. Um, awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next lesson.